we are right now in chapter four. And chapter four talks about what is called the time series features. And uh, some of the objectives that I uh, have compiled from the sections of the of this chapter is the first one is to review some simple time series features like the mean, quantile, et cetera. And we have seen this. Remember when we were doing the box cox transformation? Uh, the box cox comes from, from the package that the author, uh, the textbook author uses for uh, the time series features. In other words, it's, it's a transformation. So it's, it's counted as a, as, as, a, as a time series features. So we're going to do those simple things first. And then we're going to, you know, uh, raise the bar and discuss some concepts that are very important for certain models like ARIMA, uh, which uses autocorrelation features and lag, and also differencing. And because this is a short chapter, I'm going to include also some functions that you can use to develop those lags and, and differencing uh, features if you want to do it you know, manually. Uh, then we're going to discuss the, the seasonal trend lags, SL, STL, uh, the composition that we uh, discussed uh, uh, in the previous chapter. Okay, this is from the point of view of feature engineering. And then there are other features that are included in that package. It's called the fees package, okay? So the FIS package is basically an acronym. Uh, the FIS package, what includes is computation for features and statistics for time series, okay? So we're going to have a FIS here, right? <laughs> and as I explained before, uh, we have seen already this package in action. When you do the bus cost transformation, you see in the Guerrero estimate, which is kind of an optimization, optim optimization. Uh, you're using this uh, feature, this package under the hood, okay? So uh, let's go for the simple statistics that you can derive from, uh, you know, from a from a time series, okay? Let me let me square this here, okay? So using this. Uh, uh, this package with the features function, this function here, okay? Um, you can derive certain statistics from your time series. For example, you can compute the mean. You can compute the mean, the minimum and maximum uh, values for that time series. And also you can compute other stuff like quantiles, standard deviation, and so forth. So if we take the data from the tourism uh, time series, which is a collection of time series that divide the, you know, the flow of people around Australia by region, by state, and by purpose, then you can do a simple, you know, a simple uh, computation here where you can say, give me, the mean, right? The mean of all the trips, okay? Because the trips is the is the numeric uh, value, right? Uh, let me let me show it here because I'm I'm blocking myself here, okay? Let me okay. So the trips is the is the is that numeric value for a time series. The rest is you know their labels. So give me for all those time series, give me the mean. So you see that the result is that by region, by state, and by purpose, uh, each of those time series, then you can derive, you know, the value of the average, the average of all those those numbers. So uh, what you can see here is that because I arranged the the values, the mean values in ascending order from the lowest to the you know to the highest. You can see clearly that the kangaroo region in the state of South Australia in purpose order, okay, not visiting or in holiday or business, uh, has the lowest mean. 
And as you can see, there's a lot of values, lower values associated with that other uh, purpose, that other category. So right off the bat, you are getting insights on this, you know, on, on this, uh, you know, collection of uh, time series. Then, uh, if you want to calculate, for example, the quantile, okay? The quantile is a statistics measure in terms of, okay, you have a series of numbers, right? So which are the numbers that are at the minimum level, the zero quantile percentage? Then which are the ones that are within the quarter? within the half, within the 75%, and also the 100%, which is the maximum. Uh, when we do a box plot, we see those numbers right, right away because the 50% quantile is the median. And usually the median is a robust uh, statistic in case of the outliers. It's not you know, affected that much by outliers because the, mean, the median is calculated by the ranking of the, those numbers. You put it in order and then you check which is the value in the mid. So this feature gives you uh, the ability to calculate uh, quantiles, okay? So we're going to do the same thing. Instead of calculating the mean, we're going to do the trips again for the tourism uh, uh, collection of time series. And then we're going to, you know, um, uh, calculate the quantiles. And the quantiles here are 0, 25%, 50%, 75%, and 100%. Okay. And right now, let me see if there's something here. Okay. Let me see if I can just give you the, the, the next, the next uh, columns. Okay. Without changing the, the, the five. Okay. Here, here we go. Okay. So as you can see, for each of those time series, you know, which is kind of a combination of the region, the state, and the purpose, then you have all these uh, numbers, okay? And you can then, usually what you do is that you plot them, right? You plot them in a, in a visual form, and then you can get some insights. But this is, you know, the basics of what the author is giving us about that, that package, you know, those simple statistics that we can, we can use. Okay, so... Let's go then to the autocorrelation features. And here in the autocorrelation, this package gives you a lot of autocorrelations, some that you didn't know that even existed, right? And the function is the feed underscore SAF uh, a function. And it gives you, for example, the first autocorrelation coefficient for the real data, which is the lag one, right? Uh, sum of squares of the first 10 correlations, the first autocorrelation coefficient from the difference data, okay, which is the the you know the the difference the difference between the original value and the lag number. So in this one, you know, uh, for the benefit of uh, our audience and also for the benefit of the ones that are are coming, you know. Uh, in the pipeline for the future cohorts, I did a little uh, tutorial about how to calculate lags and different di differences, okay? Using uh, base R, but also using uh, functions from the package time TK, okay? Which is a very good package for manipulating tables, not the tables that the author is using tables, which is the regular data frame in the tidyverse, uh, you know, how to how to manipulate that. So I took again the uh the time series for the SP 500 that we talked about in one of the in one of the exercises uh, that we did about the autocorrelation, etc. So I stick with that one. And one of the things that you can do is that the dplyr package gives you a function that is called lag, okay? And what it does is that it creates a, a column, okay? It creates a vector of values where they are kind of shifted from the real data, depending on how many lags you have. If you want lag one, then it's going to shift that real data by one position. 
So your first uh, number is going to be in the second position. Your second number is going to be in the third position and so forth. Okay. So if I do this, if I, uh, you know, uh, I run this, it's going to give me the first lag and the second lag. Okay. And here we are. You have the original values that just the values for the closing of the SMP at that particular day. And then you'll, you'll have a shift in lag one, a shift that the first value is going to be now the second value. The second value is going to be the third value and so forth. In lag two, then you're going to, you know, shift two positions. So the first original data is going to be the third one. The second is going to be the fourth one. And you know, so forth, okay? Why are we discussing this? Because as I told you, some of the models that we're going to be studying, especially ARIMA, uses oracle correlation, and oracle correlation is based on the lags of the original data. Okay, what about the differencing? Okay, that one is a little bit, you know, uh, tricky. And differencing, let's see if I can show it here, okay? The difference, what it does is that when you have a, an, a lag value, what is going to do the difference of one, the order of one, is going to do, is going to subtract the original value from that lag value. And that's going to be the difference order of one. If you want uh, subsequent orders, the formula is kind of exponential, okay? So depending on the shift, you're going to apply a power, right, an exponent to that to that particular uh, difference. For example, if you are doing difference in two, it's going to be a quadratic uh, term. Okay. So, in other words, what are, you, what are you trying to do with differencing is trying to de-seasonalize or detrend that that time series. All right. So, but it's better to you know see it in the in in the practice. So let's take. This uh, example, which is, we're going to cal calculate the first lag, and then we're going to calculate the first order of differencing, okay? Which is D diff double F underscore one. So let's see what happens here, okay? So as you can see, we have the original values, the adjusted values. We have the lags, okay? The shift of one position, and then you have a difference a difference in term that is the subtraction of the adjusted value versus its lag. All right. Okay. And if you want, if we want to check if that value is correct, base R gives you a function that is called diff, D I F F, which calculates the differences. Okay. The first and second and third order of difference depending on the parameter differences. So let's do this, okay? And as you can see, the first number of diff uh, underscore one coincide, coincides with the first item of that vector, 7.099 rounded to 7.10, negative 4.58, negative 4.58, okay? So it's important that we understand, you know, how are these numbers uh, being computed? Because as, as, as I, you know, keep repeating, in ARIMA, for example, the AR of ARIMA, autoregression, uses lags. The I component uses differencing. Okay, so it uses this type of, of values to calculate, uh, you know, the next, you know, the, the future, the, the future values of that time series. Okay, so let's, you know, be adventurous and let's plot this, uh, the difference in to see, you know, more or less, you know, what, 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 what it is. Okay, so this is a, a plot of the adjusted values dif dif differencing by order of one. Okay, and this is your, your result. Okay, as you can see, there is a lot or of spikiness, right? And those spikes could tell you the presence of outliers, okay? Because it's the difference, right? 
the difference between the adjusted value and then the value that was lagged. So it can tell you uh, certain patterns that are an, an, a, a, anomalous, right? A, 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 anomalies in the time series. Okay, so if we want to create a second difference, uh, what I did here was to use, because it's kind of easier to, to do, is to use a function from the from the time TK package that is called diff underscore vex. So what it does is that it uses the base R of diff, but then it incorporates not only the differences, but also the lags. So you can have differencing between different lags and different orders of differencing. Just to make sure, in, in the traditional practice of forecasting, usually you don't go more than two differences, okay? Uh, because that will be the linear trend and the quadratic trend. If you go a little bit above that, then your forecast will be kind of unstable. Just like the polynomial uh, transformation. Remember, you know, when we go to a higher order, that smoothing line gets a little bit wiggly, right? So it gets a little bit unstable. So usually you'll see the REMA model using or zero for no difference in one or two. Rarely it goes, you know, beyond beyond that, that number. So let's check difference in two, right? Okay, for the same lag, for lag number one. Okay, and this is the difference in that you have when you apply it, you know, with the diff underscore vec. Let's see if our calculation is correct using the base R diff function, but now instead of difference one, you're going to do difference two, okay? And as you can see, the numbers from that column to that vector are the same, all right? So that this is more or less, you know, kind of a low level uh, introduction to how the lags are computed in these models, and also how the uh, orders of differencing also are, are, are calculated. All right. Any any comments or questions so far? Good. Okay. So let's go back. Uh, you know, to our autocorrelation features. And I think now with that introduction, with that tutorial, now we know a little bit more about why are we doing the lag features and why are we doing the difference uh, features and where do they, do they come from, okay? So if we want, you know, to get all those, you know, autocorrelation features, because you can select them, but if you want to, you know, uh, compute them all, what you do is that you use the same features function, call the value, the numeric value of the time series, and then use the feed underscore ASF. And it will give you all those autocorrelation uh, features that you know they are in that in that uh, uh, frame, a box frame. Okay. So okay, let's keep going. All right, so in the seasonal trend and lag features that we discuss, we discuss this, you know, in detail in chapter four, uh, chapter three, sorry. What we're doing here is extracting uh, some features from the seasonal component, the trend component, and the lag component, okay? Different from the autocorrelation with the autocorrelation is more about the original set of data and how the lags and the difference in relate to it, okay? Here, we're taking that component and extracting uh, features from it, okay? From the trend, from the seasonal, and from the uh, lag uh, uh, component. And this is an explanation, I'm not going to in, in detail, but this is an explanation of in the book of how those components are related and what kind of features we can, you know, we can extract. So let's see it in action. Okay, so for example, one of the features, uh, this is the function, 
from the features, uh, the argument from the features uh, function, which is the feed underscore STL. And it gives you a whole bunch of features from seasonal trend and lag. So one of the things that you can, you know, uh, check is, for example, how, what is the strength of your trend or what is the strength per year of your seasonal uh, component? And you get kind of a measurement, you know, an index from zero to one, a measurement like the correlation, a measurement of how strong or how weak is that trend or is that, you know, seasonal component by the period, et cetera. Okay, so you can extract it right away from there. Depending on the use that you're going to do, if you're going to do more an explanatory, uh, 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 if, if your goal is to explain how are these, uh, you know, labels are related, for example, purpose, state, region, etc., or are you going to forecast, then some of this feature will be used. Uh, for your uh, for 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 your for your study for your study for you for, for your experiment. Okay. I mean, th there's a whole bunch of them. Um, you know, if I if I go like this, for example, there's spikiness, there's linearity, there's curvature, uh, there's STL, E, ACF, co you know, correlated with the STL, correlated with the autocorrelation, etc. So there's you know. Uh, pl plenty uh, to go to go around, you know, with this with the, with this uh, with this function. Okay, so let let's see what what kind of uses can we you know can we derive from you know some of these features. Okay, so for example, in this plot, what we're going to study is the relationship between the strength of the trend, okay, of each of the of the time of the time series. And then the seasonal strength by the year period. So you have here that we already computed those, you know, those those uh, features. Then we're going to do the uh, use ggplot, you know, to to do the, the do the visualization. And the x is going to be the trend strength. The y is going to be the seasonal strength year, and the color. Okay, it's going to be purpose. Other words, all those colors relate to one of the purposes, and there are only four purposes here: business, holiday, visiting, or other. Okay. Then, as you can see, this is a, a you know a, a grid, right? A facet grid here. Uh, one of the things that you can see here right off the bat is that usually the highest relationship between the trend and the seasonality is in that green is is, is in those green uh, dots right those green dots and those green dots uh correspond to holiday you know to holiday traffic and i believe it makes sense right usually holiday traffic is you know it, it goes to a trend unless something happened like covid right <laughs> okay but usually the trend is that you know there's more people interested in you know traveling in you know going to different places etc before you know before anything happens to them right okay and then uh also you have a seasonality too right uh, you know depending on when the kids are in vacation like for example summer or uh, winter or certain you know certain uh you know major holidays uh for july for example in the u.s uh, maybe in Australia, you know, they have their own, you know, probably their own, their own Independence Day, whatever. So uh, what, that, that's one of the things I know holiday will be impacted by some of the events that could impact. So that, that's one of the things that the author brings us in terms of those features and how we can, you know, create uh, certain visualizations to gather more information or affirm our assumptions on certain patterns that we are that we're testing. Okay. So in this one, let me see. Okay, in this one, uh, uh, here, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to do the same feature uh, STL, uh, you know, extract the, the, the feature STL uh, components, 
but then we're going to filter them by the maximum seasonal strength uh, by year. Then we're going to plot the quarter and the trips. And what we're trying to do, depending on you know, the, the region, the state, and the, and the purpose, which is in this case is holiday, uh, which are the peaks, right? You know, where does the time series for each of these quarters, uh, you know, are, are the highest, okay? And as we can see, uh, usually the peaks correspond to a certain time of year, right? And for example, in holidays, remember that Australia is in the Southern Hemisphere, so it's kind of backwards what's happening in the Northern Hemisphere. So usually the summers are in the, in the December to January uh, period, and then the winters are in the June and July, uh, you know, months. Okay. So as you can see, the peaks kind of, you know, go in that in in that range between December and and, and January, which is the summer summer years, and then they go down when it's kind of you know June, uh, July, August. Okay, which is kind of the the second to third quarter. Okay. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, again, you know, he uh, mentions, you know, very uh, useful and very, uh, you know, comprehensive uh, features that can be extracted by this uh, function, okay? Uh, I just put it there in the notes. So, you know, you know, uh, you can, if, if, you, if you need uh, some definition or some use to it, then you can you know that you know that function will give you that uh that number okay just you know this is more definitions of each of the of those you know first features there are about a lot of them there are about 40 something okay so uh there are other features you know like i was saying in the fees uh, package uh the package only computes a few dozen of of those features just you know if the default uh, behavior, but you know it gives you more, more, uh, more options for for getting getting uh, more esoteric features. Okay, so uh, the four point five is another study on how we can use uh, you know the the feature set that comes with this fees package and now we're seeing the whole you know the whole the whole uh, uh the whole package not just the feature saf or the feature stl this is the whole the whole thing and they they give a total of 48 as i told you 48 uh, 40 plus 48 uh features uh for every combination okay of time series here so for each time series they're going to have a total if you want it all a total of 48 uh, features, which is, you know, quite comprehensive. Okay, so let's see how we can use them. So in this one, we're going to do kind of a pair plot, you know, uh, graph uh, to get more insight on the variable purpose, okay? So the color code is purpose again, uh, business, holiday, visiting, other. And then what we're going to do is use a couple of, of the features that come from the package. For example, the seasonal strength per year, the seasonal peak per year, the seasonal trough year, seasonal uh, autocorrelation one uh, with the lag one and the partial autocorrelation. Just select all, you know, some of, some of these features, right? Okay. And then try to see what is the relationship between all of them, okay? Between all five, which is, this graph is, is telling us. So one of the things that we can do is check the correlation, okay? So the correlation between season autocorrelation F1, okay, the lag one, and the seasonal strength year, there's a strong correlation in holiday. In fact, it's the strongest in holiday. It's around 0 0.9, which is pretty, pretty strong right? And also the partial correlation. So we know that that feature is going to be, if we want to, you know, use it 
as an indicator of uh you know of of seasonal strength okay then that would be a useful feature right uh the same thing here right okay with seasonal asf1 and the partial usually they are highly correlated okay and so forth and you can see also the you know the different uh different uh you know the kernel distributions etc and how you know you know they they kind of group or they you know kind of uh kind of, kind of go disperse etc so you can see there's a strong relationship here also, also okay now the author also incorporates something really interesting and we saw this uh use you know quite a bit in the feature engineering uh, book by by Max Khan, uh, um, the use of uh, principal components, okay, and because you can see in this plot that there is a lot of correlation between these features, okay. So one way that you can use them without the multicolor collinearity a phenomenon that is associated with high correlations between features, what you use is uh, principal components. And when you uh, apply principal components, what, what you get usually is the first two principal components accumulate the most of the variance for the whole, you know, for the whole set. And also those principal components are not correlated. Okay. So that that's basically what the author did here. Okay. He did you know, he 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 grabbed the, the, those features in that data set, tourism features. Uh, he got rid of the of the labels, right? To because remember, principal component analysis just work with numbers; they don't work with labels. So he got rid of the labels. He applied the the PCA uh, function PR comp, okay, which is the base uh, R uh, function for PCA analysis. Scale it scale it through and then use the augment okay to get the principal components uh uh numbers okay and what he did was graph the first two principal components and then color each of those points color by purpose one of the things he notices and it's you know uh at the at the bottom is that again those green uh green dots Okay, they have, you know, in fact, they are group, right? You know, they are kind of in one section of the of the plot, in 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 lieu, right? You know, in a different different from the other uh, purposes that are kind of scattered. So it is. It seems that holiday really has, you know, a strong relationship between. The features that the principal components uh, uh, the principal components are are made of. Okay. So, for example, he says, uh, first, the holiday series behave quite differently from the rest of the series. As you can see, almost all of them are right here in this quadrant, while the others are just scattered. Right. You know, you see all this uh, blend of different colors that you cannot really distinguish them. But holidays really. You know, stands out from the, you know, from the rest of the pack. Okay. So clearly, it says here clearly, the second component, uh, principal component, is distinguishing between holidays and other types of travels. Okay. So holidays is kind of, uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> holidays is kind of, uh, you know, in in a sense, is kind of an outlier from the behavior compared to the other, right? To the other uh, purposes, which are kind of mingled. So if you want to do like a cost, like a, like a, like a, you know, uh, a segmentation of this uh, data, easily you can segment the holidays, but you cannot segment the rest of them, okay? They are all, you know, kind of, you know, mesh with each other, okay? All right, so uh, here is more, you know, a little more more insight into the into the, the principal components. 
And what he's doing here is that he's going to filter the first principal component. He's going to filter it for the ones that are greater than 10. So in other words, greater than 10, which is here, okay, this, uh, th this label here. So we're going to try to find the ones that are greater, okay, that are to the right of this plot. And as you can see, there are only four, uh, four, four, four observations. And these are the four observations. And as you can see, most of them correspond to holidays, right? And interesting also, uh, two of them are in the same, more than the same area, the, the same state, Western Australia. Okay. And also you can, you know, use this for, uh, you know, trying to get a sense of outliers, you know, in other words, of anomaly, anomaly and numbers and anomaly trends. Okay. All right. Any comments, questions? <laughs> yes. Oh, thank you. Uh, so it's all uh, very interesting. Yeah. Um, are there any exercises that were uh, worth mentioning? Yeah. Let me let me check. Um, Okay, in chapter four, uh, let me see which exercises do we leave Okay. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Okay, uh, uh, Federica, there are only three exercises. So we can do, I believe uh, we did, yeah, I think we can do the, the number two. Number two, which is an exercise that is uh, related to that per plot uh grid okay you know analyzing different uh relationships between the features okay of uh of a time series i, I think you know we should we should do that okay exercise number two okay yeah. okay am i on time oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah we covered that really really fast <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's a short, it's a short uh, uh, chapter, okay? It's, it's more, you know, the introduction of uh, the features functions so that you know where the, the algorithms are taking, you know, uh, it's, it's more under the hood what, it, what, it, what is happening. But also it's good to know these uh, features for exploration, for exploratory data analysis, Okay, to understand, you know, the, the patterns and the insights, outliers, anomalies of your time series, you know, it, 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 it helps a lot. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I think you are up next week, right? Yeah. The forecast of toolbox. Okay. That, that's where, you know, we're going to start dipping our toes into certain algorithms. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Yeah, so let, let, let's see if we can uh, have maybe half session for the yeah. exercises. And if we have time, then we can continue with uh, chapter five. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. So that's it. <laughs> See you next week. Okay. Have a great weekend. Thank Take you. care. <laughs>